All right, so in this video, we're going to look at the Dijkstra algorithm. And the good news is that if you already understood the flood fill algorithm, then the Dijkstra algorithm should be rather easy to get. I think it's not that hard. And once we've integrated the Dijkstra algorithm, uh, it's kind of one line of code to make Dijkstra to A star pathfinding. So bear with me. We will first look at the problems that the flood fill algorithm has. Right, so I've prepared a little example scene for you uh, where I want to show you the limitations of our current uh, implementation. Now, let's imagine we have a game like Civilization, which is a turn-based strategy game. And in Civilization, there are wood tiles. And if you want to move a unit across a wood, it takes more movement than if you uh, move it on a plane. Usually, you can move two tiles uh, on planes, but only one tile across woods. Uh, and in the algorithm, we call this the movement cost. So that way you can implement different kinds of terrain, for example, woods, swamps, hills, or whatever. And your units might take different, um, different times to cross these terrains. So in our current implementation, that's simply not possible. So the Dijkstra algorithm, however, makes this possible. And let me just show you what uh, happens if we do this. Now I delete this wood again, and you can see it. Uh, I, I created this project so that it prints the, the number of steps you need to take or the number of movement points you need to spend to reach uh, a certain destination. Now, if I haven't got any wood here, the Dijkstra algorithm will also compute until here. However, if I put some wood in here, uh, it realizes that you would need far more movement speed uh, to, to cross the wood and it reduces kind of the range where you are able to go. And uh, one of the, the great advantages of this is also that you need to compute far less tiles because if you look at this usually you would compute everything however if i uh, place some wood in here the dijkstra algorithm immediately realizes that they have far higher movement cost and thus uh, it's not that important to calculate what's beyond this wood because it's rather hard to reach. So it will eventually calculate this. So for example, if I put my starting position more like here, you can see it will try to uh, go beyond this wood. However, it takes into account the movement points that are available compared to how far you need to go. And it will always try to take the shortest route. So for example, if I would click here now, it would go through the forest because it's a little bit shorter. And that's basically the huge advantage of the Dijkstra algorithm. And I'll also just show you what the A star algorithm does even a little bit better. Now note the tiles that were calculated here. Now, if I switch to A star, they get reduced by a lot because A star tries uh, to limit its reach to the shortest path to the destination, so it will calculate even less tiles and thus be more efficient and performant than the Dijkstra algorithm. Right, so enough with the chit chat, let's take a look at how the algorithm actually works. All right, so I think you remember this intimidating screen, which we're going to use to understand how the algorithm works. Now, there are a few changes compared to the flood fill algorithm. Now, the first change that you should realize is that the frontier queue is no longer a normal queue, but instead a priority queue. And this priority queue still works for the most part like a normal queue. However, uh, it's no longer a first in, first out queue, but instead, it, if you call DQ, you will get the tile with the highest priority. And the highest priority in this case means the lowest <laughs> priority integer that's in here. So if I have two tiles in here and one has the priority of 15 and the other has the priority of one, it doesn't matter 
at which time I put those things in, the queue will reorder so the the one with the lowest priority will always be on top okay so if i call dq i'll always get the one with the lowest priority so that's something that's pretty neat okay the next thing that changed is that we no longer have a visited list but instead we save the movement cost which we needed to reach a tile now, what does this mean? Uh, if I need to go to this tile, I would have to move here, 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 and then here. Uh, and in this dictionary, I save how much movement I need to move to, to this tile, for example. So if I put this here, it would be probably one, right? Now, if I get this here, the movement cost would already be two because uh, I first need to move here, then I need to move here. So I always know how much movement cost do I need to reach certain tiles. And uh, the last thing, the next tile to go, this uh, does not change because that's kind of the, the final thing we want to generate to know where the player should go to reach the destination. And I also added one more change because I added here a forest, which will take five movement points to move towards. Okay, so now let's have a look at how the algorithm actually works. Okay, so the algorithm again starts at the goal and expands from the goal outward until it reaches the start. So we'll first look at this goal and what happens is we put it into the front here it has a priority of one however we will immediately look at this tile so we don't necessarily have to do anything here all right so i immediately know that uh, due to the fact that this is the goal i have absolutely no cost to reach this tile so let's put that in here uh, and with that, we're already done with this tile. So now I'm looking at the neighbors of our goal itself. So north, there's nothing. East, there's nothing. And then we have this 2, 1. And we can see immediately that we would need one movement point to reach it. So let's put it in here and tell it it has a cost to reach of one and also we will put it into the frontier queue so we'll next look at its neighbors and we'll give it a priority again of one and the priority is always the same as the cost to reach and this will come in very very handy in just a minute okay you'll see why this is uh, so neat that the priority is actually the same as the cost to reach. Good, now we, uh, I think we have looked at the stuff from him. Now let's tell him that in order to reach the goal, he needs to move in this way. And now we can draw the arrow in here and we know we're done with this guy, at least for now. Next, let's have a look at the other neighbor. Now I can immediately also tell that this has a movement cost of one and uh, that's because I will also put it to the frontier queue with a priority of one and I can tell him that in order to reach the goal he needs to go to this tile and we're done with this one too I can draw the arrow because I told him this and with that I'm finished with the goal itself. So this guy is done for. Now let's continue working on the frontier. So I'll get the topmost one, which will be this tile. And um, now let's look at its neighbors. Now, first north there's the goal we already looked at the goal we can tell this because it's in the cost to reach tile so this is basically our more advanced visited list from the uh, from the flood fill algorithm so next we will look at the south one and this is a little bit special because it's a wood and i'll just say 
if you get into a wood, you need five movement points to go there. So let's uh, put this one in here. And uh, the cost to reach it is actually the cost to reach the previous one, which is one. So I needed one movement point to get here, plus five to get into the wood. So the cost to reach will be six in this case. Okay, and I'll also put it into the frontier queue because we'll have to look at its neighbors too later again with the six as the priority because the priority always corresponds to the cost to reach. Now I also need to tell him that if he wants to reach the goal he needs to move here. And now I've drawn this arrow and I'm done with this guy. Now I'm still working on this tile here. I'll look at the next neighbor, which is this one. We can also tell we need one, two steps to move toward it. So we can put it in here with a cost to reach of two. And we can also put it in here and he has a cost to reach of two. And now the priority queue kicks in because now it will shift around. So uh, the, the guys with the low priority will uh, will be dequeued first. So it will put this one up there. And this one has a higher priority. So it will be put in front of the other one with a priority of six. Okay. And the last thing that we do is we tell him where he needs to move to reach the goal. And now we are done with, with this tile. Now the next one is actually rather uninteresting, so I'll just fast forward it because we'll look at this tile. All right, so now we're getting to the interesting part. So we will look at this tile now, or at the neighbors of this tile, which is our current frontier and uh, north uninteresting east uninteresting so south is the starting position so that's what we're going to look at and i'm running out of space here okay it will be a tight spot anyways so we're at this position right now so we will tell him he has a move cost of three and we'll put it in here also with the three and it will shift again and we'll put him in here so that he knows where to move towards. Now the algorithm is almost finished. So now I know that currently my best approach to this goal will need three movement points. So uh, the algorithm should still continue running because he might find a better solution. In this case, it won't. But in other examples, it might find still better movement paths. So in this case, it will still calculate this guy, which already has a priority of three. So let me put this in here. Priority of three. So that one gets down, that one gets up. Um, and then it won't go past three. So this one would have a movement cost of four. There's no need to go there because, I mean, even if I put it in here with a movement cost of four, uh, as soon as my algorithm uh, goes beyond the priority of three, it no longer needs to check anything because the path will only be slower. So that way we actually don't need to look at this guy. And we also don't need to look at the neighbors of this guy. So that way we can already save at least some performance. And do keep in mind, this is only nine tiles. Uh, bigger projects have a few hundred or even thousand tiles. That way we can already save some performance by not calculating out everything at all. Um, I know this has been a lot. It's been very theoretical. In the next video, 
we're going to implement it and you'll see it's actually not that many changes. We'll just have to change up a little bit. 